Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Senator George D. Aiken, a farmer from Putney, served as a Vermont representative and lieutenant governor, followed by two terms as governor before being elected to the U.S. Senate, a position he held for 34 years. A new biography of Aiken with special focus on the Vietnam War called Say We Won and Get Out was written by former Aiken staffer, journalist, and author Steve Terry, my guest today. Thank you so much for joining us, Steve, to talk about this venerable Vermonter. Thank you, Fran. Very pleased to join you. Yeah, it's terrific. So. Um, Aiken's political career, of course, spanned five decades from the Great Depression all the way up to Watergate. Give us a quick picture of George Aiken's Vermont legacy. Well, um, Fran, almost any, um, anything you do in Vermont these days, whether it's food stamps, whether it's school lunch programs, mm. whether it's um, eastern wilderness areas, um, whether it is uh, um, special uh, um, research for um, sugar maple trees, <laughs> all have George Aiken's name on it, or George Aiken was the principal mover. And that was many years ago, and those last every day in Vermont. Right. And, and even uh, co-ops, Vermont uh, electric co-ops. Exactly, electric so. co-ops. He brought rural uh, electric power when he was governor and in the 1930s to Vermont. Major. So he was not only um, a major figure in Vermont, uh, but also nationally. So Aiken worked with five presidents, and like Senator Leahy, he became the dean of the of the Senate, which you know the most longevity. How influential was he in national politics? Well, nationally, uh, George Aiken didn't have a lot of power in the old-fashioned way that you do in. Uh, uh, politics like Lyndon Johnson or um, Everett Dirksen. What George Aiken had was tremendous influence. And that is why he was often called the balance wheel hmm. in that he could bring both sides together, uh, something that we do not see often these days in Washington. Well, right. Well, one of his legacies, of course, was his bipartisanship. Uh, he was a leading Republican, and for years he had breakfast with Senate Majority Leader, a Democrat, Mike Mansfield. How common was that then in Washington? And I can't see that that's common today. Well, even then, um, many, many years ago, it was very uncommon. It was um, every day they would, about 8 o'clock, go to the um, Senate dining room. The only other person allowed at that table was Lola Aiken, who uh, was a major influence in um, George Aiken's life. And they would talk privately for about 15 or 20 minutes over English muffins and a coffee. And it was often stated in uh, Washington at the time, because Mike Mansfield was the majority leader, that um, that George Aiken would say things <clears throat> that Mike Mansfield couldn't, especially wow. on the Vietnam War issue. Well, and, and here uh, they both are at a visit to Vietnam with um, <coughs> President Chu, uh, Van Chu. Uh, so let's get to the Vietnam era since, since here we are, um, because I'm, I'm sure that they both influenced each other a little bit about what they thought. Your book really focuses on the Vietnam era, um, say, one, uh, say We Won and Get Out, um, uh, with George Aiken and the Vietnam War. Uh, this history looks at that, you know, headline-grabbing um, 
call in 1966 to withdraw from Vietnam quite early, early in the war. Why the focus on the Vietnam War for you? Well, um, the, the reason that I um, wanted to write this book and have wanted to for many years is that Aiken's role in working with Mike Mansfield, uh, Senator Cooper of Kentucky, Senator Javits, Senator F uh, Fulbright, um, was a very quiet role, but a very important part of um, how the U.S. Uh, started to think about withdrawing from Vietnam. Now, back to that Aiken speech, that had actually its origins in starting way back in the 1950s when Aiken was first on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Um, he was very skeptical of, of whether the U.S. could ever win that war, but it took him several years. And, and finally, <clears throat> after uh, uh, LBJ, Lyndon Johnson was then president, mm -hmm. um, it was not making moves that Aiken and Mansfield thought to wind down the war. They felt it was time to speak. And Aiken was the first major voice that said, we must um, de-escalate the war. We must uh, understand, tell the country, tell the world that the U.S. Uh, will have, quote, won this war. Now we should start to come home. Well, that well, was a that, big issue, the whole idea of, of winning the war. But would you say he was isolationist or... or of well, I don't think so. I think he was a... <clears throat> if I had to describe him, um, in, and I worked for him for six years, as you yeah. mentioned, he was a live and let live Vermonter. And by that, I mean... He did not think we needed to be the world's policeman, nor did uh, we need to um, run every country in the world. So he was um, not an isolationist because uh, he often used um, food policy and to help um, other countries in the world. One of his great uh, sayings is, I favor food over bullets. <laughs> that's and that's how he dealt with U.S. foreign policy in that way. So were, were you surprised as you researched any, anything that you came up, you know, this is 50 years later, um, when you, and, and there were probably some, uh, some documents uh, that may have or may have not have been um, a su surprise, like um, Kennedy wanting to get out of the war very early on, but not getting to that point of reelection because of, of course, his assassination. Well, um, um, George Aiken had often uh, in private conversations told me that um, that John F. Kennedy uh, told Aiken and Mike Mansfield uh, privately, mm. but uh, separately, that indeed if JFK had won the 64 election against Barry Goldwater, that he would um, move the U.S. out of Vietnam. Now, um, there has still been some debate over that in uh, the books that have been written uh, since. But I believe that it was um, pretty clear to both, certainly Senator Mansfield, who was very close to President Kennedy, yeah. and George Aiken, that that would have been the result if indeed it um he had won the election, and as of course we know, he was assassinated and never so had that opportunity. 
Sorry, Steve, we only have a, a couple of minutes left, so I want to, one, make sure that we, we put a shout out to your research assistant from UVM, uh, Louis um, Algeri, who you have credited um, on the title of the book, which is fantastic that you had um, right. a UVM researcher. He must well, have had a yes, great time. Well, yes, he was fantastic. <laughs> he did, and it was great. And I really have to uh, uh, thank, uh, frankly, Richard Watts at the Center for Research on Vermont, who helped arrange that. And Lewis and I worked with each other for um, about a year and a half. So it was a tremendous effort. So uh, be before we close, in, in what ways does um, Senator Aikens or Governor Aikens' legacy still continue in our political court culture? Of course, he was a farmer, um, got into politics because his, his family did. But what are some, some other, what, what continues in our political culture that we can credit to him? Well, number one, um, uh, common sense, uh, honesty, um, and uh, uh, valuing other people's opinion, and uh, not being afraid to stand up and speak out when he saw things were not, um, not happening well or to help the country. And he was an unorthodox Republican starting in 1938, and he certainly would be today. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, you know, a lot of people do ask you, what would, would he be recognized as a Republican today? What would, um, what would he do? What would, what would he have thought of, of what's happening today? Well, I think he would have been, frankly, outraged by Donald Trump. Hmm. Um, um, and he would have made that view known. Would he have left the Republican Party? I don't think so. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, and there are uh, this outspoken and, and not taking pressure from uh, corporations. I mean, he, he yeah. talked about that in 1938. <clears throat> exactly. He said that, uh, and he was very critical of big money in politics, and he was also very critical of uh, big corporations and their influence. And he was very, very unhappy when the executive branch would, um, would um, exercise power that belonged right. to the Congress. Well, Steve Terry, thank you so much for talking a little bit about uh, Governor Aiken this morning uh, or this afternoon, uh, author of a fascinating look back called Say We Won and Get Out, George Aiken and the Vietnam War. Uh, you can find his book at local bookstores. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Fran. Pleased to be with you. And thank you all for joining us on Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well.